What's good everyone? Welcome to X Chapter Channel. Today's topic is three things I believed about Japan before I moved here. That turned out to be wrong. Let's get started. First of all, I'd like to ask you, if you like this video, please hit that like button at the end. It's a small thing, but it really does help out the channel. And I do have one quick caveat about the topic, which is I didn't really have a lot of expectations before I came to Japan because I just didn't really know a lot about Japan yet. And as such, I didn't really have much in the way of preconceived notions. It never was about coming to Japan in the first place. I've told this story a few times on other episodes of this channel and I was just looking for a chance to live abroad somewhere. Japan had this exchange and teaching program that I signed up for and that's what brought me here. Now, with that said, I did have three things that I really did think before I came here that turned out to be incorrect. The first one is that Japan was this high technology hyper modern society and this is actually one that a lot of people have and if you come here as a tourist you're not really disabused of this notion because yeah you arrive you spend time in Shinjuku you get on the bullet train to Kyoto and you see some wonderful ancient shrines and temples then you get back on the bullet train come back to Tokyo go to the robot cafe poke around in Akihabara buy all kinds of weird crazy stuff from vending machines and you think wow Japan has got this right they've got this great mix of their ancient traditional culture and all of this hyper modernity actually in my first couple of days here my opinion didn't really change about that I started off staying in Shinjuku which is a pretty hyper modern area of Tokyo it's all high rises lots of neon vending machines everywhere, everything's automated. And when I got to Japan in 2002, everyone had a cell phone. Now, that sounds strange to say now, but in 2002, I didn't have a cell phone in America, and most people I knew did not have a cell phone yet. It was a couple years later that it really became this ubiquitous in the States. But in Japan, it already was. Everyone already had cell phones here. So I'm walking around Shinjuku and everyone's on their mobile. Yeah, it seemed pretty hyper-modern. Then I got on a bus and I headed out to the countryside and moved into my first apartment in Japan. And that place looked like it had dropped out of the Soviet Union circa 1964. In my bathroom, I had an actual crank to get hot water. I had to take this crank and until finally boom, the gas would light and I could have hot water for my shower. There's lots of areas in Japan where it isn't that crazy technologically advanced or modern. Famously, Japan is very much an analog society, very much married to paper still. Government agencies have reams and reams of papers that they have to put into binders because very little is actually digitized. And I mean, it all comes back to that all important red seal that has to be affixed to all the official documents. It keeps them pretty paper oriented. In the first school I was, they had a dusty unused computer room. There was basically no technology beyond a blackboard and chalk in the classroom. And you might be saying, well, that was 2002. What about now? I ask my university students if they use any kind of learning software as part of their schooling in junior high school and high school. And 99% of them say, no, no, they, they never use computers in class, which sounds pretty wild to me. Japan is also hilariously still married to the use of a fax machine. Now, ask yourself this. When was the last time you sent a fax? If you're in Japan, 
It might have been this week. If you're not in Japan, it may have been years ago. But again, married to paper. I guess you gotta fax it and then you get that red stamp on there. Not a lot of digital signing going on in Japan. All right, number two, the second thing that I thought I knew about Japan before I moved here that turned out to be wrong. That is, I thought Japanese people in general would know more about martial arts. Now, no, I didn't think that everyone did karate or anything silly like that. I might have believed that when I was six years old, but I didn't come here as a young adult believing that. But I did think that Generally speaking, people would know a bit more about martial arts in general because it seemed from afar to be such an integral part of Japanese culture and history. But it turns out it's more like Americans and baseball. Yes, you get baseball enthusiasts who know a lot about the game, but you've got a lot more people who know a little bit about it, can na maybe name a few teams, has been to a game perhaps, and then you've got lots of people who don't care anything about baseball, have a rudimentary idea of what it is, but beyond that, not really. And the martial arts here are like that. You've got enthusiasts, you've got people who know, you know, generally speaking what they are. Judo might be a little bit better known simply because it's an Olympic sport and it gets some play on the TV. So if you come to Japan and you've been studying maybe a historically significant, but a little bit obscure Japanese martial art, and you talk to people about it here, yeah, they're not gonna know what you're talking about. The third and final thing I'm going to mention today is maybe not something that I actively thought about Japan, but was a little bit culture shocked by when I got here, and that is how non-religious Japanese people are and I mean that from the standpoint of worship now if you're from America yes uh, religion has a little bit more hold on society than in countries like say in Europe but you know people who are Christian or Jewish or Muslim or Buddhist and they've got some kind of worship in their life whether they observe certain holidays or they go to mosque or temple or church or synagogue regularly and that just doesn't really happen in Japan. For the most part, religious ceremonies and holidays here have become more cultural traditions. They've become more just part of being Japanese rather than any sense of religious worship about them. You go to the shrine on New Year's and you pray and just as kind of a thing that you do as a Japanese person rather than any sense of religious piety. Now don't get me wrong, of course there are devout Buddhists in Japan and there are devout followers of Shinto, but your general populace is not that way at all. And you know, from a historical perspective that makes perfect sense. After World War II, the Americans came in and wrote the Japanese Constitution and very firmly established the idea of separation of church and state. The Americans wanted to put an end to the emperor worship and the sort of hardcore state Shinto that had existed at the time. And many believe was a big part of what led up to the conflict. And the Japanese themselves, the country had basically been leveled, it's rubble. Everything is lost, so many lives are lost. And Japanese of that era and the era since, the generations since, basically said, enough of that. We need to get away from the type of religious fervor that led us into this predicament to begin with. So by popular movement, as well as American occupation made constitution, Japan became very irreligious. And I'll be honest, it's one of the things that I actually think is really refreshing about Japan now. Kind of a freedom from religion. You're not gonna run into any religious zealotry here of any type. I think my friend Andrew actually put 
the image of Japanese religion best by calling it vending machine religion. And that really works. You go to the shrine, you get up to the front, you throw your money in the box, you bow twice, you clap twice, you pray a little bit, you bow again, the whole thing takes 10 seconds, and you go home. Maybe buy a little amulet on your way out. And that's it. Not really a grand or deep sense of worship is going on there. All right, let me know what you think. Did you have certain bubbles burst when you arrived in Japan? Share them in the comments below. Comment on the ones that I just talked about and remember to like, subscribe if you haven't. I drop a new video every Friday and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye for now.